11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. What a fight! I think we're going to win! Juan, the Hispanic causing panic, Las Cano! And thanks to those joining me live and those that will be joining me on Archive D-Style. Here, make sure you hit the like button. Um, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe if you like the content. A lot to talk about, so let's just get right to it, okay? I am um, going to be talking about Paulie Malignaggi and some of his recent comments made about Saul Canelo Alvarez, Okay. And, and and you know, I I got this on Pro Box TV. I think overall Pro Box TV is doing a great job, and and I'm it, you know it's it's they're providing content, which I think is great. I just don't agree with a lot of the things um, that Pauli Malinaji is saying. But before I even get to what I want to say about Malinaji, um, I want to make sure that this is more about the messenger than it is the message. And I want to make sure people do understand, right, that first of all, you listen to the video, listen to my points, that's number one, right, and, 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 and judge what I say based off of merits and what I'm saying. Not what you heard, not what somebody told you, not what your perceived, you know, you know, preconceived notions are like just 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 take what i'm seeing and listen to what i'm actually saying okay i just want to make sure people understand that i i obviously i i and i've been saying for a while now i want to see the david benavides fight like i've been saying that forever i also believe the fight's going to happen and and i've had my criticisms about canelo obviously right when it comes to the situation. However, I do think there's people that have this derangement syndrome when it comes to Canelo. I think people over-exaggerate things, right? And they don't add it to scratch uh, and subtract. They, they multiply and divide it. This is crazy. Some of the things I'm hearing. So I'm going to talk about Pauly and some of the things he's said. Okay, and we're going to, of course, address that. By the way, shout out to anybody watching on YouTube. If you're watching live, of course, hit the like. I see you guys in the chat. HLD, Hesu Sam, TV Boxing Fan, Anthony Sanchez. Uh, shout out to you guys. And everybody on X, I see you as well. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. You can always subscribe to D-Style Boxing here on YouTube and join the chat at any time. All right. And and as always with any video, um, I appreciate the support. Make sure you guys hit the like button. A hundred likes per every video, whether it's a round table, ATP, a live like this, you name it. Um, a hundred likes is the goal. So every time you hit the like, we're that much closer. Also, um, I had some changes in my work schedule. So there's gonna be some changes. On, I have to restructure a lot of things, so it is what it is. And, and one of them is when I do the shows. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do the round table on Thursdays anymore. Okay. I'm um, not that this is an official announcement video, but, but it'll be on Mondays. This coming Monday, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet. More than likely, I will, but it's up in the air. But mo Mondays is moving forward. And, of course, uh, Calix and I will be doing an ATP show in the afternoon every week as well. We'll let you know on the time, and we'll try to create a concrete time so you can tune in every single 
week. Um, once again, subscribe to Cell Boxing. Hit the bell so you're notified, and I appreciate all of you. Okay? Pauli Malignaggi. A couple of things. I want to address something he said, and then we're going to kind of just, you know, and we're going to stick to the merits here of what he's saying. All right? And then we're going to go from there. All right? So, so let me get this ready. I'll play it out on my phone. This is uh, fair use and all that good stuff. You know what I mean. All right, all right. And let's go ahead and get to listening. You know what I mean? Let's play this. 3-0, 34 wins by knockout. All right, Paulie, the floor is yours to talk about Canelo and the fastball and as he loves the step. Hey, the, the idiot of idiots can understand this one. The Denver Nuggets won the NBA title last year, right? Good. This year, the Denver Nuggets, if under Canelo's rule set, they say, you know what? We won a title last year. We're the champs. We want to skip, you know, a couple of guys, a couple of the good teams in the Western Conference playoffs this year because you know what? They're kind of good, and you know, we want to we want to make our way right to the finals. We're still the defending champions, and then the team that makes it out of the East, we're not really comfortable playing them. So we're gonna play the team that loses the Eastern Conference Finals instead because we match up a little bit better with them, you know. And, and maybe we can. And, and you know what? We owe it to the Never Nuggets because Jokic is such a good player, and you know he's done so much. And you know, there's everybody's everybody's in town for the NBA Finals. Everybody's watching the NBA Finals, so you know it's still the NBA Finals. So you know, we we owe these guys because they they had such a good team last year, and and they and they and they, and they you know they deserve to. Uh, uh, you comparing team sports to, to? Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, Bradley. Um, but let let's go with Paulie's own analogy, if we may. Right, let's do that. Um, he's using basketball. Now, look, not everything has to be the same. It could be similar. And you could also understand his – I get his point. But I'm not going to act like I don't get what his point is. I get your point, Polly. Fair enough, okay? But here's the problem, a couple of problems. Besides the fact that one of the team sport one is in, but, but I get it, okay? But let's just take it for what he means or what he's saying. Here's a problem with what Paulie is saying. First of all, I don't want to go over the, the obvious differences between basketball and boxing. One of them is boxing doesn't have a season. They don't reset every year. And they don't – like you know what I mean? Like, like the structure of boxing is just different, right? I, I get that. So I, I don't want to dive too much into that. I think that that's what you – know, obviously what Bradley was pointing out. Here's the, the problem with Paulie Malignaggi. Um He's talking about he's using the example of the Denver Nuggets not having to play uh, any of the other teams to just play in the final. Um, first of all, that's how it works in boxing. When you're the world champion in boxing, in the next fight, you're defending the world belt. Like it's that's just how it works, right? It's always worked that way. That's not something Canelo made up. Like you don't win the world title or become undisputed and they, they just become vacant and then there's a new season all over again. Right, and then everybody fights, and then like that's not how it's done. That's not amateur boxing is, is more so like that, where they have a new tournament and, and then they have a gold medalist, silver medalist, bronze medalist, and then guess what? Boom, next tournament, they do it again. So it's more like it. Pro boxing is nothing like that. Okay, but but like I said, we're not we want to go over the obvious too much, but I, I want I do want to specify the, the irony in all this. Um, you see, what Paulie failed to mention, what Paulie failed to add into his analogy is that imagine that the Denver Nuggets had to play everybody the year prior, and only they had to play everybody. Nobody else had to earn a spot in the playoffs, right? And they just looked good on paper, right? They just had a good team on paper, and they got to just chill and just and that's it and what's funny about this is that i actually did a video about two years ago where i used a very similar analogy but but what i was saying was canelo has to fight everybody which is what he did but like canelo unified the division all right let's start before canelo was even around David Benavides was the WBC champion. Kata Plant was the IBF champion. Billy Joe Saunders was the WBO 
champion and the WBA champion was Callum Smith. Canelo wasn't around. Canelo was fighting at 160. He even skipped the division and fought at 175 against Kovalev. Canelo even fought Rocky Fielding for the regular WBA. And I specifically remember, I don't know about Pauly, but I remember people criticizing Canelo saying, why doesn't he fight the real champions? How dare he fight? You know what I mean? How dare he fight? You know, the fake champion, the regular champion, when you have real champions, which was true. Nobody really liked the Rocky Fielding fight. But my point is, before Canelo even showed up, there was no championships at, like the NBA Poly. There was no Denver Nuggets playing everybody and becoming the champions. There was no, you know, the Eastern Conference champion facing the Western Conference winner and the winner of this facing the winner. There was that none of that existed. In any weight class, but we're talking specifically about 168. None of that existed. And of those four, a couple of them, two and two, Smith Saunders over here with, with Matchroom, Plan Benavides over here with PBC, none of, none of them fought each other. Forget about the winners fighting each other. Forget about Eastern Conference, Bali. Forget about Western Conference, Bali. Forget about the winners facing each other. And then next year, imagine if the Denver Nuggets did X and the Denver Nuggets did Y. And, oh, well, let's give them a break because the Denver Nuggets did this, 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 that, and the third. And There was no, quote, unquote, Denver Nuggets for your analogy, Bali. It didn't exist. There was no unifications happening at all. You had four champions, none of which were fighting each other, all of which were fighting fights that, quite frankly, nobody wanted to watch, nobody cared about, against opponents that everyone knew, like the Subway dude over here with Caleb Plant, like they just knew, like Caleb Truax and Plant, like people just knew, couldn't beat these guys. Angulo wasn't going to be Benavides, but but I get it. Like I, I'm not even complaining about it. But there was no Eastern Conference champion facing a Western Conference champion. We we didn't even get past the semis. This division didn't even have playoffs. 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 I was just hoping they would have one unification. Shout out to Coach. I forget his name. He's close to the, the Colts. You want to talk about playoffs? Playoffs? There was no playoffs at 168 before Canelo showed up. In fact, in the history of the division, there was not even an undisputed champion. All right? Just to put that out there. Right? We came close. But playoffs? Polly Monazi wants to talk about playoffs? Playoffs? I've been waiting for a while to use that one. But, so Polly Monazi wants to use analogies that just don't apply to this fucking division. Saul Canel Alvarez, in one rolling year, in 11 months, beat not one. Jim Mora, thank you. Not two. But three undefeated reigning champions. Not one, not two, but three. And even crossed the street, all right, and went to PBC to collect the last belt. That's what Canelo did. Oh, but this time, that was in 2001. That's not my point. I'm going to get to all that. I have my criticism of Canelo too, but I just I just want to point out that these analogies don't even work with the rest of boxing. Why isn't Paulie talking about the Denver Nuggets in, in the sense of Crawford and why Crawford 
should do X, Y, and Z. Why isn't he talking about anybody else? Why just Canelo? Why does Canelo need to do things the way they're done in the NBA, but but like nobody else does it? Can somebody please explain this to me? The dude had to go all the way back to Muhammad Ali. If you got to go back all the way to Muhammad Ali to find an example of a dude that fought everybody, he did more than you, look at him, he was a great... If you got to go all the way back to Ali, why don't you use Floyd Mayweather as an example? I know why. Why don't you use Andre Ward as an example? I know why. All these dudes, they remind me of Littlefinger. You know, on you know, in Game of Thrones, you know, just like we're all liars here, and that's why we're better than you. So I just found that ironic because I use that analogy. I have a video up when I said, Imagine if LeBron James and the Lakers, that's the example I use, had to play everybody, and none of these other dudes had to face each other. How in the world would that even fucking make sense? Because that's what Canelo did. None of these dudes fought each other. And he fought them. Oh, but what about David? David lost his belt on the scale. David Benavides was on HCP and I asked him, hey, how do you feel about, you know, the fact that you lost the belt? Do you think you got to earn the way back? And he said out of his own mouth, I need to earn my way back. I need to work. My I, I fucked up. I missed weight. And I got the receipts. So, so spare, and I agree with that, and I do feel he has worked his way back up. I do, okay? But Paul is using analogies that just, they just don't apply to the entire sport. This is insane, bro. But, but, but let's play a little bit more here. All right, we're going to play a little bit more. All right. A single man sport is different. Hey, okay, let's do. Let's, okay, let, let's let's play tennis then. Let's go. Let's go with tennis. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's different, Polly. At the end of the day, and it's not Canelo's fault. So you want to go tennis, Polly, right? Like, oh, let's use the example of tennis. If boxing was run, oh, I would love for boxing to run like tennis. I would love that, but but it doesn't run that way, and that's not Canelo's fault. Like, oh, it's because of Canelo. They don't do shit the way they do it in tennis. Ain't no division in boxing. Ain't, ain't, that's never, it's never worked that way. It just doesn't. Because if shit ran like tennis, then Benavides, Plant, Smith, and Saunders would have all uh, uh, fought each other. And there would have been, an, uh, you know, there would have been a bracket and there would have been, you know, a final and we would have had an undisputed champion. And that's the way shit ran. It should actually run like tennis, Paulie, but it doesn't run that way. It should run like tennis, Paulie. We wouldn't have to hear, you know, um, Keith Thurman calling you out. Don't duck me, son. It wouldn't have happened if shit ran like tennis because ain't nobody in tennis telling a dude to not avoid them and this and that and because you're going to go to a tournament and you're going to have to play everybody. And you're going to go down the bracket and that's it. But it doesn't work that way in boxing. It never has. And quite frankly, you can't do it. Like it just, it just, it wouldn't work in boxing. All right. Don't get me wrong. If you want to do it, if you wouldn't. like tournaments in boxing take months, right? Because boxers take damage and they got to recover and they got to go back to the, even if you're active, you got, it takes time to recover, get back to the ring. Like, like, even tournaments they've done, and they've done them, and, and I get that, the World Series of Boxing or whatever, but they take a long time. You can't just do it continuously all the time, is what I'm saying. If we're a smart ass, oh, they have the tournament. You know, even Smith, you mentioned him, and he won a tournament. Like, what, what I'm saying is, you know, and everybody knows, that's just not the way it works in boxing, and it's not Canelo's fault, okay? It just isn't. All right, so so here, here's what I'm saying. I don't want to bring up tennis as that would make it any better. But if it was like tennis, Canelo, all right, let me just use the term that all the cool kids use now, would have done all the heavy lifting. He wouldn't have 
taking care of a plant because quite frankly, plant and Benavides never fought each other. And I know they point fingers at each other. And I know Samson said they marinated the fight on purpose, you know, to, to make it bigger. I know that, um, you know, they, they were trying to marinate and make it big or whatever. I, I, whatever. I don't know what Smith and Saunders, I don't know what their deal was about, but apparently none of these dudes were ever doing anything, but now we want to use analogies that don't apply to anybody. Keon, you know how long the Super 6 took? And even then, we didn't get undisputed out of it. Dudes were pulling out, okay? And and, and and I'll tell you what, it proved that single elimination is better anyway. But but not not only that, like we didn't, like, Butte wasn't in the division and Ward didn't fight him for whatever reason or maybe Butte did the, the Frotch fight, Frotch beat him. Okay, but whatever. But my, my point is this, okay? That's not the typical structure in boxing, and Polly knows that because Polly engaged in it. Polly knows, okay, that's not how you make fights in boxing. Polly knows it doesn't work anything like like the NBA structure, and it, 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 like that's not how it works in boxing. He knows that, and, and and the analogy doesn't even benefit his argument. It just proves that all these other suckers ain't doing shit compared to Canelo. That's all it proves. That's literally all you're doing. Now, with all that said, before I continue, okay? With all that said, um, Paulie also says, I don't want to find a part of the audio, but he also says um, he keeps referring to Mungia as the, the loser of the Eastern Conference facing the Nuggets in the final. But Mungia hasn't lost, though. Like, like I just don't understand his analogies, Paulie. Mungia hasn't lost. What are you talking about? What, what, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? I'm just saying. But my issue is this, okay? L let me just say this before I proceed. Of course I want the fight. Bruce Goss, shout out to you. You don't have to come on the chat and tell me, oh, he has to fight Benavid. I, I know he does. I want to see that fight. See, People just hear what they want to hear around here. They just they just hear what they want to hear, right? This isn't about like whether that fight should happen or not. This is about Paul Malignaggi, right, and his bitter little issue that he's got with Saul Cano Alvarez. Because it doesn't it doesn't just stop with this. And we're talking about hypocrisy. I talked about Andre Ward the last time, and we saw Andre Ward, right? Who look? Did a lot of great things in boxing. Became a two-division world champion. He was a gold medalist. I'm not trying to shit on the guy, but the things he criticizes Canelo about, he did. Oh, why do you have to drain guys, you know, to down to your weight and this and that? But, but like, you did that to Dawson. Oh, but Dawson called him out. Yeah, but Bibble was calling out Canelo. And then you were coming out proactively saying, oh, Canelo, you better not do that. You better not bring him down. Like, like That's what you did. You did that to Dawson. Like, what are we doing here, right? And then all oh, these guys, they, you know, uh, you know, they want all these excuses. They reach a certain spot, and they think, you know, I don't think he's deserved, you know, being able to pick and choose yet. But but you picked and choose at one seventy five. You didn't fight, uh, you know, Stevenson. Like it is what it is. But you didn't fight Stevenson, bro. So so, and I did a whole video about that. So I don't want to dive too much into it. But here's the thing. Pauly, he criticizes Canelo for fighting a guy moving up two weight classes, right? And, 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 and I got to make sure people understand this. Canelo is not a big 168 pounder. I genuinely believe Jermel is just as, if not bigger than Canelo on fight night. I believe that. Okay? Like, that's just how I feel about it. Okay? So, I genuinely believe that. Okay? So so that's number one. Second, they just take it for face value. A guy moved up two weight classes, but it was a guy, first of all, that many considered pound for pound. He was an undisputed champion. Okay, Jermel was. So the best at 154. Um, he called out Canelo, right? For what it's worth, right? 
And they did the fight. Okay, whatever. Um, this is not about your opinion about the fight. This is about Pauli Malignaggi. Pauli Malignaggi literally fought someone. Like, I just don't understand what these dudes that criticize Canelo for doing things that, that they did. Pauli Malignaggi was a, was a 147-pound WBA champion. Okay? He was the weak link of the division, if we're honest. But he was still a champion. And he fought Adrian Broner who was a champion at 135. Broner moved up two weight classes to fight Pauli Malignaggi. And, and he beat Pauli Malignaggi in the infamous don't talk about my side piece, right, in that, in that fight. Pauli Malignaggi, who was never at 135. See, Canelo fought in weight classes. Lower than where Jamal came up from. Canelo and Jamal at one point were in the same weight class. Canelo, as a little guy, moved up to fight bigger guys, right? Paulie was a bigger guy who started at 140, I believe, okay? But he was a champion at 140 at one point. After the Haddon fight, which he lost, he ended up moving up to 147, okay? And and, and beat that dude in Ukraine, I forget his name, and he became a, a title holder again, and then... He fought a lightweight moving up, moving up to fight two weight classes to fight Pauly. And, and here's the difference between Canelo and Pauly. Canelo fought an undisputed guy. Pauly fought a guy who I believe had a lot of hype behind him. Okay, but, but that was not an undisputed champion. And he lost. Pauly lost his fight. Canelo dominated this fight. And Pauly wants to critique Canelo for the performance against Jamal, but but Pauly lost to the guy that moved up to weight classes to beat him. I'm just pointing this out. That's all I'm doing. Very interesting. Pauly did that too. Pauly wants to call out Canelo for allegedly ducking Benavides and avoiding the fight. He even went as far as saying he never he doesn't believe the fight will happen. If they offer him 200 million, Canelo will still have, you know, uh, you know, uh, dictate terms and still try to get out of it in some type of way. But he might do it anyway because it's too much money. Whatever he wants to say, right? But the reality is this. Pauli Malignaggi never fought Keith Thurman. He didn't give Keith Thurman a shot. Pauli Malignaggi fought a little dude. And Adrian Broner moved up. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the only win Broner has at, at Welterweight. Broner's record at Welterweight is not that good. In fact, people started saying he's too small. He should move back down. He's too little for the weight. But he beat Paulie at that weight. And, and my, my point is this. It just shows the hypocrisy of Pauli Malignaggi, right? And then, of course, I get it, right? Hey, well, we got to judge it. Differently, this style. Like, in fairness to Pauly, uh, you know, he basically saying that, that he's the face of the sport, and, and that's when he brought up Muhammad Ali, and 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 Muhammad Ali didn't do that, and, and I get all that, right? In fact, you know, let me get the audio. Basically, maybe the fourth guy in the weight class. So, is the, if the Western Conference champion Denver Nuggets decide to get to the finals and say we're going to play the Eastern Conference Finals loser instead of the Eastern Conference Finals winner, still a good matchup, but it just ain't the matchup you're supposed to have. You know what I mean? So that's basically what we're getting here. It's still a good matchup. You know, it's a solid matchup, especially with there's a, a slightly fading Canelo uh, and ascending Mungia. Mungia, again, keeping him basketball terms, he's high offense, very little defense. He's more like uh, the Mike D'Antoni sons back in the day. You know what I mean? They were real fun. Amari Stoudemire, real fun. They were they were high flying, offensive, but they had no defense. You know, and they so they couldn't win the big one. They couldn't win the NBA title. I feel like 
Munguia is a, a, a top level fighter. Obviously, he's been a champion. There's multiple world titles in every weight class here. So, I've, and he's been, and he's, he's elite. Listen, he's elite. He's a top guy. It's just, for me, it's not the guy you're supposed to be fighting. It's not even any of the top two guys supposed to be fighting, but it'll make a lot of dollars and cents. Munguia is a very popular Mexican fighter, and he fights in the classic Mexican style. High offense, lots of fun to watch, combination punching, hittable. It'll be interesting because Canelo's sense of timing, again, Canelo's still shrewd. Canelo's still sly like a fox in there. You know what I mean? He can punch in between you. He's got that timing. So there are still uh, talk. So if we use Paulie Malignaggi's logic, right, because this is his analogy. It's not mine. It's just his analogy. If we use his logic, right? How does it work in basketball? Like, do, do the Nuggets automatically face the like? They're not going to make it to the finals, right? So, so even by his own logic, if, if Mungia is the fourth best guy, right? Then, then it's or to make that. Then let's do it the NBA way. In, in the NBA. The one seed will face the four seed, right? And the two seed will face the third seed. So by Pauli Malignaggi's own admission, which is going to contradict in a moment, using his analogy, he picked the NBA analogy. Because in the NBA, the other teams don't just get to sit around and declare themselves the best. No, they have to actually get to the final, right? And the Nuggets, in this case, okay, don't have to face everybody, right? That's not how it works. Using his analogy, right? And, and when I say face everybody, I'm not saying they should that Canelo shouldn't face everybody. What, what I'm saying is, is that if it's only Canelo face everybody and these other guys don't need to face anybody, is what I'm saying. Okay. By his own admission, okay, so so so. Over there in Eastern Conference, and then it looks like Benavides and Morales should fight each other, right? And then let the let Canelo take care of the four C over here, and then the winners face each other. By his own admission and his own analogy, that would that would be the case. But according to Pauli, you see, we're just gonna use that analogy and ignore the fact that the Nuggets they they play a quarterfinals. They play a semifinals, right? It, like they don't just jump straight to the final. That's all I'm saying, right? This is his analogy. But listen to what he'll say in a little bit. Uh, it, it's, it, this is great. Points here for this fight that can make it interesting. And it's power just, is the last thing to go, Paulie. Mm, yeah, and all those have power. Go. And you know, it's just it's just not the fight that I wanted. But you know, it, it, we're gonna still talk about it, like you guys said. I mean, Canelo is still a very popular fighter. Paulie, don't uh, sound so down. It's a good fight. <laughs> look, I'm, look, man, look, I'm, I'm gonna turn the corner real quick. I'm, I'm about to turn it. the corner because I gotta make something be known right now, man. Right, Jim. Like we talking about Benavides, and we want to see Benavides face Canelo, and and now we're talking about Munguia and so on and so forth. Like we're talking about like Benavides, like he's some gangster, like you know what I mean? Like he's supposed to dominate Canelo and so on and so forth. I don't think so. I don't think so. And Benavidez, didn't he didn't he walk away from an opportunity to face against Morel? David Morel? And yeah, so so like in, in Paulie's own analogy, right? The Denver Nuggets, right, are gonna they they reach the semis, right? They're, they're gonna face a fourth because that's how it works. Right? Like if you're the one that wants to use these sports, right? So he's facing Mungia. So it's perfect for your analogy, Polly. Your analogy. So wait, wait a minute. So the Denver Nuggets need to face everybody that you wanted to face, right? But but these other teams, the Lakers or the I don't know the the, the Bulls. I don't even know who's good now. By the way, the Warriors. They don't have to face anybody. No, the Nuggets need to give them a shot they, in the final. division if he's that damn bad he would have took that fight morale but the reason why he, yeah, exactly he hey, took it's, still, it's still on canelo though because canelo you know? james the whole weight class everybody's waiting for a shot at canelo so hey, that's hey, the hey. problem now nobody wants to fight each other that's the live jam you create when you do that when you're the yeah, money so. no but here's the problem like that that's that that is not something i'm gonna agree with i'm just gonna put that out there okay 
this whole like Canelo's holding up the division, lock jamming the division. It's not true because this whole division was lock jammed before he even showed up. There was four world champions and none of them all undefeated. None of them were fighting each other. Lock jam. What are you talking about? What do you mean lock jam? Like, oh, it, it's he will fight because it's Canelo's fault. I mean, it's his fault. Okay, so was it Canelo's fault that that, that that him and Plant didn't fight each other for all those years and had to marinate it to get less than hundred thousand buys on fucking pay per view? Like, is it is it his fault that two guys that were with match rooms? It's just so in it, before I get the whole like, oh, you're just going after BBC. Okay, the two match room guys were fighting each other. They were fighting each other. What are you talking about? Lockjam. Oh, he's doing it because his presence alone is stopping that fight from happening. Pauly, let's use Pauly's own analogy. The Clippers, as Troy Mack just said, don't get to say, hey, hey, man, I feel like I've earned. We had a great season. We had a great quarterfinal, you know what I mean? And, and I feel like we've we earned the right to, to face the Nuggets. And, and I don't think we got to face the Lakers because that's unfair. You know what I mean? Well, why do we have to play the Lakers? We might lose. So I don't think we need to face it to face the Nuggets in the final. Because that's what you're doing. And I know what, I know what a lot of you are thinking, well, that's not how boxing works. I know it doesn't. But I'm not the one that brought up this analogy. Fucking Pauly Malinaji did. Okay? We're using his fucking analogy. The Clippers don't get to say, oh, now, you know, I, 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 come on, we're better than the Lakers. We, we shouldn't have to, like, risk it all against the Lakers. Plus, the Lakers are the second best team. Well, 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 why are they facing the, the fourth best team over there? And we got to face the second best team. I mean, I, I, that, that makes no sense. And, like, well, what are we doing here? Or the third best team, whatever, right? And you got the Lakers saying the same thing, like, no, nah, I, I, I don't think. Well, why should we face the Clippers? No, I, I, I just think we should play for the NBA Finals now against the Nuggets. They could play the Clippers, and we'll face the winner in the final. Why well, you don't get to do that in basketball? Which is why the whole analogy is stupid to begin with. Well, it doesn't work that way. I know. Go tell Paulie that. All your cheerleaders are like, yeah, yeah. Paulie's making great points. Yeah, like in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. Edwin Castillo, I forgot uh, this. I appreciate it. Paula Duck Thurman, worse than one time's hairline. Shout out to you, brother. Look, Paulie, I mean, by his own logic, right? Duck Thurman, by his own logic. Like, this is crazy. This is projection 101. Let's hear a little bit more, though. And so now, and so now, back to McGee real quick. I just had to throw that out there. Right, you know, no, you're right. That's a great point. That's yeah, great. he should have not created because of Canelo. Right. But, but instead of fighting the Morel, what what is Benavides doing? He's going up to go face who? A, 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 a guy that's coming back, foes there. Okay? So everybody's making their moves. Everybody is trying to protect. So everybody's making their fucking moves. And no, and Paul and then says everyone's trying to protect their old. Canelo's not protecting any old. Canelo's lost twice. Because Canelo has the best resume in boxing, has fought the best fighters, and he's tested himself more than any sucker in his whole fucking industry. So, so like it is what it is. Because Canelo went and beat the whole fucking field to win the NBA championship. Because the, the other guys didn't have to face it. Imagine like Nadal had to beat the top four guys to, to, to win the fucking U.S. Open or some shit. This is why the analogy is stupid to begin with. All right? That's why it's dumb. What the fuck are we doing here? Well, you could say he doesn't hate Canelo, but but I mean, you know what? A lot of guys that don't like Canelo use that cover. No, no, not him. His fans. Yeah, you don't like him. Like it is what it is. Like you know what I mean? Like like I, I mean, 
maybe some of them it is the fans, maybe it's not, but with, with Paulie, it's not about the fans. I'm sorry. Right? Like, look how he's talking about it. Like, he was just told the fact, and he's like, yeah, because Canelo, Canelo's at fault for that. Like, Canelo's at fault? For, for the morale fight not happening with, with Benavides? What? Bro, that's called mental gymnastics is what that's called. But, but let, let, let's hear a little bit more. Canelo and, and making their moves. All right, now, we're talking about the volume. We, Hold on. It's forward plotting coming uh, j- j- uh, j- Develop a jab. Hold on. Best punch now early and still be there. He is damn dangerous. So they're talking about what Mungia has to do to beat him. Yada, yada, yada. Until you actually know. Mm. Damn, I mean Mungia. Mungia fight is a match of John Ryder uh, from Mungia. Uh, and uh, for, for Freddie, I mean, Freddie's. But by the way, for itself. He made, he's made every fighter he's worked with better, you know. And check this out, okay? Lockjam. John Ryder didn't get caught up in a log jam. You see that he like here's the thing. People will say things like he's log jamming the division. But like John Ryder what was active. Like John Ryder was beating top 10 guys in the division. Like I'm just saying it's not like John Ryder was this inactive guy or some shit, right? He wasn't just waiting around. That's just true. But but let's let's proceed here. And uh uh um but Freddie's a very offensive trainer as well, you know, and so I think the marriage could work very well. And I think you saw it with the stoppage of John Ryder uh from Mungia. I, I think you know there's a lot of fight with Freddie Roach and uh, and do what he needs. Hold on. Canelo would definitely not fight the winner. That's another reason why they don't fight each other. And do what he needs to do to to get past this uh, shrewd uh, veteran that is Canelo. Also, I want to make one last point. If Benavides fought Morel, Canelo would definitely not fight the winner. That's another reason why they don't fight each other. <laughs> Next. All right, all right, Tim, the question is to you. Which fighter has the edge? Who's the better trainer in this matchup between Reynoso and Roach? Uh, and hopefully, to, you know, uh, getting closer. I, I feel like the real discussion was about Canelo, and, and and they're kind of forcing the discussion about Mungia. Like, I get it, um, but but like I'm I'm finding myself skipping the, like the Mungia points because everyone kind of knows all this. But um, I'm trying to find a part with Paulie at the end. To knock you out, um, but he dangerous. You know, Canelo time and it's kind of fell into his lap. Um, the game plan, I know Freddie's going to come in with a game plan if he wants for uh, the trainer relationship to Freddie always, like you said, champ. Yeah, you know, that's important too. You know, someone that's confident. Is, I think I, I missed and, it, guys. I, I missed the part. Like, I don't, and I don't want to like keep scrolling through it. So it, it, I think it was like in the middle of the video where he brings up Ali and it's a bigger, it, 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 you have more of a responsibility. Look at Ali fought everybody. Pauli Malignaggi had to go all the way back to Muhammad Ali to give us an example of somebody who fought everybody whenever and this and that. Like, you know what I mean? Um, here's the reality, right? Pauli Malignaggi would not only not criticize Mayweather, he would praise Mayweather for all his moves. Okay? Paul Malignaggi himself did stuff like this, but I'm bringing up Mayweather because he's using the standard argument, right? The standard being, hey, I held you to a higher standard like Ali, right? And by the way, who's comparing him to Ali? Who's who's saying he's the best of all time? And I'm not saying nobody's doing that, but what are you talking about? Like, I just don't see that, Okay. And and I think what happens a lot of times, and like a couple of Canelo fans will say something, right? And I've had this happen. Like a couple of fans say something, and then I hear guys saying, like all Canelo fans are saying it, and then they try to show proof that no, Canelo fans are saying this. Look, okay, but you're going to the most fringe, hardcore, diehard Canelo fanatics to prove a point. Your most most Canelo fans, I would say a vast majority are not co- comparing him to Ali or saying he's the best of all time. I think most boxing fans understand that this is the era that we have, right? I, I think we, we all know that. 
I think we all know how things really work, and a lot of us wish it was better. But we also understand that, that Canelo has the best resume in boxing, and he has fought really good opposition, far better than anybody else in the sport. And other guys wouldn't reach just a little bit of the monetary value Canelo's made turn into divas themselves, okay? Think, think they're worth more than they're really worth. or, or like A lot of guys, like Benavides is doing it to morale. Like he doesn't want to take a risk of morale. And, and then for some reason, it's on Canelo to give him a shot in order to fight morale. Look, if you don't want to fight morale, then don't fight him. But there's a reason you're not fighting morale, but, but you are fighting Andrade, right? There's a reason you fought Plant, but you won't fight Morel. Like, what? Why do you need a guarantee to fight Canelo to fight Morel? If he's so dangerous and you want it to be worth your while, then just say it. But they won't say that. Instead, they'll say Morel does nothing for us. He brings nothing to the table. They're using the same language. That's the reality. It doesn't make sense for us right now. I don't know. Same language. It doesn't make business sense. Same language. Just like you could say, well, hey, well, why did Canelo fight Ryder? Why not Benavides? I could say the same thing about Benavides and why he's not fighting morale, but he fought this other guy. I could do the same thing. Anybody could do that to anybody. Of course, I want to see the Benavides fight. Of course, most of us want to see it. Of course. But Pauli Malignaggi has an agenda, okay? When Floyd Mayweather reached the point of his career where he was not really fighting, like, he fought Maidana twice. Nobody wanted to see that, okay? It is what it is. He fought Robert Guerrero. Nobody wanted to see it. I, I don't remember Pauli Malignaggi being up in arms about those fights. Oh, but that was later in his career. What about Welchway when he retired and he didn't fight Margarito. He didn't fight Paul Williams. He, there's a lot of guys he didn't fight. And I don't want to make this about Floyd or I don't want to like I do think people go too far when they criticize Floyd in my opinion. But it's all about if I use your logic thinking. If I use your logic then what? If I use your logic what? Right? If we're going to use the analogy like basketball and the NBA or, or, or tennis, then that means that in any tournament, you don't start off by like one guy does like it, it's, it's, a, do you want to, uh, if you're going to use the analogy of a tournament, don't confuse it with Dickstown. Okay. Don't confuse it to a gauntlet where one guy needs to fight everybody. Right, and all these other guys are not expected to fight each other. And if, if you want to say, "Hey, well, in boxing, he's a top dog, so everybody should be shooting for him," I agree. But I'm not the one that came up with these stupid analogies. Okay, I'm not the one that used the NBA analogy or tennis analogy. That's not me. I'm not the one that, that I couldn't even go back. Polly could have used Mayweather as an example. But he didn't. He went all the way back to Muhammad Ali. To fuck, you went all the way back to Muhammad Ali? Jesus Christ, bro. So what I'm what I'm saying is this. And, and 92Q, I'm not disagreeing with any of that. People keep missing the fucking point, bro. Just get my point. I'm talking about Pauli Malignaggi's analogy. That's what I'm talking about. And how it's making no fucking sense. That's what I'm talking about. Of course I want Canelo to fight Benavides. I feel Benavides has earned it. Okay? That's my opinion. I don't have a problem with the fight. You're not, you're, I'm not going to debate something I agree with. I'm, I'm just putting that out there. But the, but the reality is this. The things Paulie is saying, like he's he's log jamming the division. I explained why this division was log jammed before Canelo even showed up. You cannot blame Canelo for guys not fighting each other. 
Now you can't do that. Is what I'm saying. Like that's stupid. And then use basketball analogies and tournaments and this and that as if it means anything. Because the only one that was facing the guy that was coming off a loss or, or a recent loss was was David. Right? It is what it is. So look, everyone's gonna have an opinion about Bubuan Drod. I thought it was a good win. People have an opinion about Plant. I thought it was a good win, right? But to then say, ah, oh, but he he shouldn't have to fight. Uh, uh, he won't fight him because he, uh, he won't fight Morale because Canelo. It's Canelo's fault. Uh, I think that's stupid. Because he fought those other guys. Why can't he fight? Like you know what I mean? Like if we could do that with anybody, right? I just wanted to say that, but Paulie never had anything, anything critical to say about to this day. Won't criticize uh, Mayweather. Look at all the welterweights that Mayweather didn't fight that were around when Mayweather was around. He didn't fight Paul Williams. He didn't fight Margarito. He didn't fight Cal Brook, and Cal Brook was undefeated. He didn't fight an up and coming. Keith Thurman was around. Porter was around. Danny Garcia was around. He didn't fight any of those guys. Now, before you tell me, ah, but Mayweather would have beat them anyway. Well, I think Canelo beats the dudes you're, you're claiming to anyway. But you don't see me out here saying, oh, he'll beat them anyway. So that is the only thing I'm going to point out. With that said, guys, I am tired. I have been up since like 3 a.m., right? Had a long 12-hour shift. I'm tired, but but I appreciate everybody that tuned in. Um, I really do. Um, sorry I didn't get through the chat. Let me just kind of do a rundown, give a shout-out to people. Uh, make sure you hit the like button before I go. By the way, those watching on, on X, I appreciate it. I got a bunch of people watching. I got 287 people watching on X. I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? What What is this? Just to show you guys. I don't know what this is. Where are these people coming from, brother? I don't know where they're coming from right now. You know what I mean? But the 287 people. They shout out to y'all. I appreciate it. Retweet it. You know what I mean? And like it. And uh, subscribe to my channel. Like it. These stuff boxing. Um, I appreciate it. Let me see something here. Yeah, no. Um, so look, shout out to Omari. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you said he emailed me. I don't know. I'll check it, I guess. Uh, Hard Times Boxing, 92 EQ, uh, USC 300. This is, we're talking boxing right now, bro. What's with this dude, bro? Like, like he's over here talking about MMA, and he probably doesn't even watch any of those MMA dudes. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? This is over here talking about MMA on my boxing channel, bro. All right? MMA, MMA. I don't want to watch those dudes in bicycle shorts running around and shit, and teabagging each other, and doing arm bars. And I'm good. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just talking shit, but I'll probably watch it, but. It's whatever to me, you know. El Cuatro, uh, Troy Mac. Shout out to all you guys. There's an LT saying saludos, carnal, but I doubt that's LT. Um, but if LT's out there watching, shout out to him. Um, Edwin Castillo. Uh, this Troy Mac. Jesus M. Edwin Castillo, Jimbo, Monte Carlo. All you guys, man. I, I know I'm not going to get through everybody. Those Matador, Sal, uh, Sour Diesel, uh, Boxing Magic, uh, Johnny C, Keon, um, Junior Gonzalez, MPR, Bruce Gas, Demetrio, how's it going? HLD, I know I, I shouted him out earlier, but shout out to all you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. 
And um, this is D-Style Boxing. Um, Edwin, me and Calix couldn't do a show this week. Things came up, but we'll, we'll be back at it this week for sure. All right? So stay posted. And uh, you guys can also follow Calix on X on Twitter. That's at Calix Boxing 2, I believe. So follow me there as well at D-Style Boxing. I'm out of here, guys. Peace. <laughs>